Kicks one out toward right field. Harper makes the catch. Rizzo's tagging, coming home. The throw to the plate is in time. On the fly from Bryce Harper. So I'm not going to say anything just yet, but Bryce Harper has a 0.0, .0 defensive war, which is not negative, which is what it was last year. So is Bryce Harper back to being a pretty good defender? I'm not sure. What's going on guys? It's Fuzzy. Welcome back to yet another Major League Baseball recap. Today is going to be very special because we will be hitting 99,000 subscribers. It is going to be absolutely insane once we get to 100. So if you guys have not subscribed, make sure that you guys do that. Also, before we start talking about the clips from yesterday, I will be posting a second video today at about 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. So make sure that you guys turn on those bells because it's going to be a banger. We're going to talk about superstars that are playing right now that are no longer very good, so it's gonna be a good one. We're gonna be talking about Ronald Acuna Jr. and the fact that he might be the best leadoff hitter in the game. We have a bunch of other games. The Yankees are destroying the Orioles. There's just, there's a lot to talk about. So without further ado, make sure you guys buckle in and fasten your seatbelts and let's start talking baseball. The first game that I wanna talk about is the Seattle Mariners versus the Texas Rangers. The biggest reason why is because these teams have some of the best power hitters in all of baseball. If we talk about the Rangers, they have Joey Gallo, who in my opinion is the best power hitter in baseball, maybe aside from Chris Davis. And then if we go to the Mariners, they have Edwin Encarnacion, Daniel Vogelback, Jay Bruce, and also Tim Beckham, who had a grand slam yesterday, but uh, there's one little note about it. Not anymore. That's got a big time carry, a grand slam for Tim Beckham. Nice job by Beckham. You guys see that? I'm all for pimping home runs. I'm all for bat flips and letting the kids play. But when you're down and you pimp a home run, I just have to say scoreboard because the Rangers did this. Scoring position already for Danny Santana. And this ball is hammered out to right field. And he hammers this ball. Leak. And he hits this one. Last time, lined out to left field. Lost now. And he hammers a ball. Hop. This ball in the air. Way out there to left center. Joey Gallo and as Drew Cabrera came in clutch yesterday. So that was even before Tim Beckham hit that home run. So I'm not sure why he felt like he could walk around like this. Like, man, I'm Hercules. Dude. You were losing. But anyways, that's besides the point. Maybe you guys let me know in the comment section down below whether you approve of bat flips and showboating when you're down by three or four runs. To me, that's a little bit cheesy. You know, like run around the bases, try and get back so your team can get the momentum and score more runs. It's, I don't know, that's weird. So you guys saw the intro clip where Bryce Harper threw out that runner from right field. A lot of people are saying it's Anthony Rizzo. He has zero speed in MLB The Show. It does not count. Either way, it was still a great throw, but the Phillies and the Cubs game was actually really good. So there was an error that led to the Cubs tying the game then JT Ramuto put the team on his back and he came in clutch for the Phillies so we're gonna roll the error then we're gonna show JT it's a great game driven out in the left center and it gets down that one said well out to left center field going back on it is Schwarber toward the wall gone home run real Muto and the Phillies take the lead so I hinted at this at the very beginning of the video, and over the course of the last couple weeks, I've talked about Jock Peterson maybe being the most powerful leadoff hitter in all of baseball. Well, that was before the Atlanta Braves put Ronald Acuna Jr. at the number one spot, and we all know that Acuna Jr. is one of the top five players in this game when he is playing right, and yesterday he showed the Giants that you do not throw a first pitch of the game meatball to that guy. It's just, it's gonna be launched. Acuna and we are underway. First pitch swing and a high fly ball, deep left field. Brave sixth. And this one's Tomahawk to deep center. Back goes Duggar, still going back. He's gone as far as he can. It's way out of here for Acuna. A two homer night. I guess you can say those were some pretty giant home runs. You guys all know how good Ronald Acuna Jr. is, and we just saw the two home runs, so there's nothing really more to say about him. The case is out. That dude is going to be a top five MVP candidate for the next 15, 20 years. He is, maybe not 20 years, well, he's still young, so it could happen, but there's one other guy in the Braves that you guys might not know about. Mike Soroka has not given up more than one earned run in any of his starts in 2019. And oh yeah, it's his rookie season. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and show the highlights from Mike Soroka, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and lead into the Baltimore Orioles versus the New York Yankees. Really, we can sum it up with the New York Yankees being the dads of Baltimore Orioles. So yeah, Gary Sanchez, especially Glaber Torres. Even the commentators were like, yo, can we get Glaber Torres out of here? He's, uh, 
he's hurting us very much so. And a swing and a miss. And make it four for 27. Finn Sandoval straight up the pitch. Strong. Back to the mound. Second base one. On to first. Heat. Soft contact. Ground ball outs. More mastery from the young man from Calgary, Canada. Cash does 1 0 delivery to him. Torres drives that ball center field. Hit deep. Going back. Don't throw to him. I've never seen anything like Put it. Put up four fingers. I've never seen anything I mean, like it. He is just tearing the Orioles apart. Ball is hit deep to left field. Down the line. This one is gone. So there you guys saw, right before our eyes, Mike Soroka is coming up, so you guys better pay attention to that name. Both him and Luis Castillo are making a name for themselves in 2019. We saw Gary Sanchez and Glaber Torres absolutely tear up the Baltimore Orioles. Now coming up next, we have some more American League East teams. So we just talked about the Yankees and Orioles. Obviously, they're in the East. Two other teams, the Red Sox were playing up against the Blue Jays. One little note about the Blue Jays is Vladimir Guerrero Jr. did win Player of the Week in the American League, so props to him. But uh, that means nothing. That means absolutely nothing to the Red Sox because, yeah, they uh, hoo -hoo, they put a hurting on the Blue Jays. High fly ball left field. That's deep. Backing up McKinney. Backing up. Leaping up. It is gone. But well, we were delayed because of weather. That one smashed into left field. Watch this baby fly. It is gone. Those are coming fast and furious now. And that one's tagged. Come on. Forget about this baby. We're going to start talking about the standings more often in about a week or so because I still want to give some teams the chance to get over their bad starts to the seasons. Like the Red Sox, the Indians didn't start too well, but they're playing decent. The Twins are playing amazing baseball, but I'm going to give it about a week. We're going to start talking about the standings, but the American League East between the Yankees, the Rays, the Red Sox, it is going to be a sprint to the finish line. So the next couple clips are going to be a few home runs that save the day for their teams. We have Matt Chapman of the Oakland Athletics hitting a two-run bomb against the Cleveland Indians. Very sad on my end. And then Miguel Sano, who once upon a time was one of the better power hitters in baseball. I think that he was actually in the home run derby, if my memory doesn't forsake me. But he also saved the day with a two-run home run. So Matt Chapman, Miguel Sano, way to go, guys. Some quality of bats or pitches, depending what. Oh, Chapman, left field. And. And that baby is gone. Six to three. A huge two run homer for Matt Chapman. Driven to deep right center field. That ball is back and gone. Yeah. Sano to the opposite field, and the Twins take a three to one lead. What should I say? That means one thing. What? We're long overdue. Mr. Snow delivers. If my boy Giraffe Neck Mark is watching, I'm pretty sure that he's happy to watch the Mets right now because with the addition of Carlos Gomez, I think the Mets are going to have a little bit better of an offense and defense because Keon Broxton, let's not talk about him, but Carlos Gomez, Ahmed Rosario, and Pete Alonso, they all went off yesterday. And if we're talking about some of the best rookies in baseball, Pete Alonso has to be in that conversation. Ahmed Rosario looks to be kind of like a poor man's Jose Reyes. And if Carlos Gomez is even 80% of what he was, the Mets are going to be really good. 67. They've had back to back games with two hits or fewer. Rosario slugs one to deep center. Robles back out of the track at the wall. It's out of here. Alonso drives one deep left center. Forget that. That is way out of here. Brad Peacock is one of those guys where I'm just. I, I'm not sure what to make of him. He's really good one start, and then he's not so good the next. Then sometimes he's in the bullpen, then he goes back to being a starting pitcher. But for right now, I think that Brad Peacock is a pretty good starter. And yesterday, Tyler White also helped out the cause with a home run of his own. A lot of you guys kept telling me, call out Tyler White. And I just, I forgot that he was even playing on the team. But yeah, Tyler White, you better start doing what you're doing. He's about to warm up. Tyler White, high and deep, bidding for his first home run of the year. And it's on the train tracks. Train 13 has just left Union Station. His first home run of 2019. All right, guys, so there was not a lot of games yesterday, so the final one that we have to talk about is the Padres game. And let me tell you, the Padres, they have some very, very exciting players on their squad, and Fernando Tatis Jr. isn't even playing right now. But Chris Paddock, their rookie starting pitcher, so far on the season, if I look at his stats, he has 40 strikeouts and 22 innings pitched. That's insane. That's like Felipe Vasquez and Kirby Yates numbers. And speaking of Kirby Yates, he had his 18th save yesterday, and we're going to talk about him in just a second. But before we do all that, we have Fran Mil Reyes. He's a Beast. The dude is an absolute tank of a human being. He won the game for them yesterday. So we're going to roll that and then we're going to talk about Kirby Yates. Fly ball, right center field. Tyson going back at the wall. It's gone. Two run home run for Fran Bell Reyes. 
his 15th of the year and with one swing of the bat, the Padres take the lead. We just saw the home run from Reyes, the Apple Taco. Now I quickly want to talk about Kirby Yates and how he might be the most underrated player in all of baseball because not a lot of people are talking about him. Edwin Diaz got a lot of press last year and I feel like Yates is having almost the same season. He has 18 saves. The dude has so many strikeouts and his last, I think, seven out of nine appearances, he has struck out the side. Kirby Yates is quietly having an absolutely dominant season. Strike three call, one down. Swing and a miss. In the air to left center field. Over goes Margo. He's under it, and the Padres win. So that's it. So if you guys were into relief pitching, I just wanted to talk about that real quick because I really like Josh Hader, Felipe Vasquez, Arolas Chapman, Jordan Hicks, Kirby Yates. I just really like filthy pitchers. So when we have Kirby Yates dominating, I have to talk about him. All right, guys. Well, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. We were able to recap every single game pretty much in depth because there wasn't too many games from yesterday. Sometimes it gets to the point where there's like freaking 20 games to talk about if that's even possible. But thank you all so much for watching. Again, guys, turn on those bells because we will be coming out with a second video today it is a banger it kind of takes us back on the road of being a child and talking about the best players from our youth so thank you all so much for watching again we're so close to 100,000 subs make sure you slap that subscribe button i'll catch you guys in the next one peace out